So, you guys thought I would just shave my hair and that would be the end of the story after years of experimenting with different colours and whatever, hey? Well, you were wrong! And I have this massive box that we are going to look at. Um, now, I ordered this on the 17th of January and it arrived yesterday on February 8th, so I'm filming this on February 9th, just so anyone wants to know the timelines, because by the time I get this video onto YouTube after editing so many other videos, I don't know if it'll still be February. That's how far behind I am after doing so much filming. Of course, Patreon, my patrons on Patreon already know what's in this box and have already seen things, but for the rest of you, let's get into it. Right, so here's the box. It was sent all the way from Italy, that's why it took a while, although it was actually quite fast if you consider um, that shipping huh, has been disrupted pretty heavily since the start of the pandemic. And look how much they've taped it up. Oh my god, and so I don't even know how to open this. Um, wow, they've really done a great job. Now, this is from Atomic Guys. So, from Italy, I've, I've spotted them on Etsy and I thought, I've got to give this a go. I feel like half the challenge of an unboxing video is just figuring out how to open it. <laughs> Alright guys, we're going in sideways because that's just how I figured it out. Hey Hopi. Oh my goodness. Ooh, it looks like they've given me some bonuses. And Hopi's really like, what's all this? There's one more thing down the bottom. I wonder what that is. <laughs> hey, Hopi. All right, so we've got two big packages, a little rectangular package, and these two are bonuses, which I didn't order. So cute, it's always cute when, um, you know, these makers send you little gifts. All right, which one should we open first? Hope has spoken, we'll go with this one. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. <gasps> what is it? What is it? Anything Kofi? exactly how it works. That's right kids, I didn't shave my hair for nothing, did I? <laughs> and wow, yeah, so Cyberlocks, I've been wanting to get them for ages, but um, you know, when I had brown hair I actually considered doing this, and just the difficulty I had is if you have all that hair then you've got to tie it up to fit under a wig, or do you put it into little buns and get the little falls, um, but I'm not great at hair and also symmetry like, I just get a little bit too obsessive sometimes, so, you know, <laughs> can I do two buns in the right positions? I get a little bit stressed by that, and then I'm like, well, maybe I should just colour it, and then I coloured it instead of doing this. But now that I've decided I would like shaved hair most of the time, because I don't go anywhere, so having full-time amazing hair doesn't work out, right? So now, when I do want to have um, interesting hair, if I can just get this bit that's getting tangled, um, I can just chuck one of these on, and yeah, I look fun again, you know, with all this. And so this is from Atomic Guys, and as you can see, like, you know, all this radiation stuff, that suits my theme, doesn't it? Destroy America. Yeah, and it's so light. Now, the way that they've done the cap, like, it fits me pretty well. Like, it's got this real, like, you know, elastic kind of thing, um, which I wasn't sure about, but I'm happy to say that works really well. I probably need to, like, play with it a bit just to, you know, figure out exactly how these things work, because it's my first time ever doing proper cyber locks. Like, I had the crin in my hair, um, what, ten years ago. I had it, like, actually sewn into my hair, so I was wearing crin full time, but now I've got it on a wig, and it's super fun. Move it around a little bit. Ah, and so I've already got, like, an idea for one Punk Rave Australia video that I want to wear this with. I don't know. <laughs> If I'll post that first or w what order my videos are going up. So if you've already seen this, well, I've already given the game away. So I need to post this one sooner rather than later. Sorry, talking to myself. Anyway, would you like to see what else I've ordered from these guys? Should I <laughs> leave this on while I'm opening things? Um, but yeah, no, it's super light. Like the box, my parents went, well, I think my mum brought it in when it was delivered. And she's like, it's super light. Because it feels like basically nothing. And that's because foam and crin 
Um, they are super light, and I'm impressed that it survived all the way from Italy for three weeks of shipping, and there's not any, like, major folds or kinks. Like, it's actually survived really well. Italy to Australia, three weeks shipping. And, um, yeah, I'm super excited. I love how this looks. So, you guys thought I was going to shave my hair and just be that dead military schizoid kind of look? No! I'm too crazy for that. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, shall we? Oh, and then, yeah, I can wear these whenever I go on video too, if I feel like it. Instead of having to put an effort into making sure my hair is kind of straight instead of all messed up, just chuck one of these on. And I'll show you how I'm going to try and keep these in good shape a bit later. But let's open this. I know, I ramble. I cannot help it. Um, the regulars on my channel love it. If you're a random who came here by mistake, my condolences. Ah. Anyway, like, look how well they've wrapped this, and I guess that's why things have survived so well. Um, you can tell that when someone has experience with these kinds of things. Ooh, purple! Could it be the opposite colour to yellow? Did I think about the different situations I might wear things? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, wow. Oh my god. Look how much stuff's on there. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> Alright, a different style this one. Alright, so as you can see, it's the same sort of thing. It's another wig, and this one has more of this sort of toxic poison mark. Um, so, you know, I've got two different moods, right? I've got my nuclear explosives, and I've got just like dark death. And so one of the reasons I ordered from Atomic Guys is because I really like the way that they do foam. Like I know the classic cyber goth look has more of these tubies, the, the cyber Korean. Um, but I'm not really like a cyber goth, although maybe I'm headed that way, um, incorporating it into my look. I'm more of like a metal chick. I mean, I do listen to a bit of industrial metal and a little bit of industrial, but it's not been a huge part of my life. So for me, I guess the tubies, like, actually for a while what put me off is sometimes some of them look a bit like Christmas presents and I'm like, I don't want to be a Christmas present! But I really, when I stumbled across these guys with their foam, like, look how they do the foam, look at all that detail, and it looks like, like, some of them look like Swiss Army knife tools and they've just got all this jagged, aggressive shapes, which I really like, and there's so much creativity in there. They've got little, um, like, there's little things like this, extra foamies, but there's also these ones that kind of look like bones. Um, I'm not really like a bones kind of person, but I just thought this is really interesting, really creative. Um, yeah, look at all that detail. And then, of course, they've got the classic crin. If you have a look at this one, it's got some of the similar um, aggressive, jagged shapes in it, although there seems to be less foam on this one compared to the purple one. But yeah, I just really love the theming and the way that they do it. Like, their kind of aesthetic, I think, fits me better. Okay, so trying this one on is a little bit trickier than the other one, I think, because it's just so complex and trying to make it feel balanced. There are a few bits that, like, got hidden, hidden in the wrong spot after coming out of postage. But yeah, I think I've got it now. I mean, I'll probably do some tweaking over the next while. Um, but yeah, wow. This one does seem to have more foam than the other one and like a lot more complexity in terms of like how they're put together and all that. So yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now because they're both so light, it's a little bit hard for me to tell, but I think this one might be slightly heavier and also pulling more towards the back compared to the yellow one. Um, I think the yellow one I'll probably wear the most because that's got that really loud, bright, kind of vibe to it and um i really am into that nuclear kind of thing and the warning like you know yellow and black is very warning like but i recognize when i was ordering them that i'm not always going to want to look that bright so i thought i'll get a darker more subdued one that's this purple and yeah it does what i'm expecting it to here's all the little details um, there's a few foamies that might need a little bit of smoothing out, but they look amazing. How about that, guys? Anyway, so those are the two big items today, but shall we have a look at what's in this little box? Where did my scissors go? So much bubble wrap. Oh my god. I love the way that people pack things so nicely. It's also kind of funny how as I sit here, I actually am getting used to the feel of the wig and it's starting to feel more and more natural. Oh my gosh, look! It looks like they might have made this box themselves even, and they've cut this really nice biohazard symbol into it. Thank you for your order! Oh my gosh, I just noticed. So the black is like a cutout, and then underneath is a silver sort of thing that they've somehow like inserted 
under the edge there like wow i know i'm getting excited about packaging but this one they've really like gone the extra mile for Ta-da! So these are their super reflective cyber goggles with the black spikes on it. And I also asked them to customize one of the lenses to be a fire hazard symbol, which they don't usually offer. Um, usually it's like, you know, radiation symbols or they've got like these little skull ones or they've got the biohazard. Um, but they do let you do custom and it was super easy. It didn't even cost any extra. I was just like, hey, can you do this symbol? And they're like, yep, sure. And I've seen how they do it too. Um, I think they have one of those like vinyl cutting machines or something similar and then it makes a sticker that to put on there um, it's a really cool use of the technology so they can do like almost anything with that like as long as it can cut it you can probably get the design you want. One thing that was a little confusing is you can specify what side you want different designs on, left or right, but I was thinking from like my wearing perspective, but I think they maybe they were thinking from like looking at it perspective. So I actually wanted the, the flame on the other side, but it looks to me that these are actually removable and so you can like interchange them and then I can put it on the other side. So I'll just do that quickly now. Okay, so once you've unscrewed it, you've got this bit from the outside of the goggle, then you've got your customized design, and then you've got this little spacer thing, and then you've got this clear lens, which you could actually see through. I mean, the, the, the whole cyber goggles thing, I think it's based on like old school welders goggles. So people actually did use them once upon a time to actually do stuff. So it's cool that they've preserved that element. Um, I don't know why anyone today would do that. Like we'd just use it for the, the accessory, the design kind of thing. But yeah, it's, it's fun that they've sort of kept some aspect of what the original was like. All right, there you are. So they're all swapped over. Um, now, <laughs> does it matter which side which is on? Well, I had in my head like my own little story because with left and right, you know, um, the duality, the symbolism of left and right, like left being associated more with evil, right being associated more with good. Um, now, <laughs> the reason I put them on their sides, if anyone is interested, is like nuclear, yes, it's like very explosive and so on, but you can also use nuclear for power generation and it's like very nerdy. And so with the right side of me, the more like good side of me, um, I would put all my mathematics, my academia on that side. And so on the right side of me, I got the nuclear. On the other side, we've got the um, fire hazard warning and fire is much more chaotic. It's also much more natural. Um, I mean, you know, there is radiation out in the out in the wild, like, you know, there's natural radiation, but the more explosive stuff is very man-made. Whereas fire, yes, we make <laughs> we make our own fire, but it occurs on its own in a much more spectacular fashion. And living in Australia, don't we know that here? So for the left side, the more chaos. Um, that's why I wanted that to be the fire. And then I got the silver one because, you know, I didn't want to buy endless goggles because I don't know what they're really like. I haven't really used, I've only got one set of goggles and they're not great. <laughs> I used them for an art project ages back. Um, they're on my little Pikachu. Anyway, so I just wanted to get one pair of goggles and I thought silver, because it's reflecting, it can reflects like you know perhaps a little bit of yeah look it's reflecting the purple so whatever cyber locks I've got on it can reflect a little bit of that a little bit of my outfit and it kind of fits with everything and then the black spikes black goes with everything too so yeah that's what's going on there I guess I should try them on but I think I have to take off the wig first so that because like how am I going to get this over I have to go from my neck up so and I might try it on with the yellow one because We've got the nuclear stuff going on, so give me a moment. Okay, I thought I'd try them on without a wig first, just so you can get an idea, and also um, so we can understand the feel of it. Now, these don't have any kind of padding underneath the goggle bits, so you've just got like the, the is it plastic? I think it's plastic. Um, it's just sort of straight on your head. So wearing it as is, it's not the most comfortable kind of thing. I think you definitely want something underneath there, whether it's a hat or a wig. Um, but yeah, it was pretty easy to adjust. And as you can see, I have made them, um, you know, the right size. Now they were sort of up here, these little adjustable things, but when you do that, you get like a little flyaway tail. So I just pulled it up here. No more flyaways. Anyway, now to try it with the wig. Now that is a look completing accessory. It just sort of fills up that blank space where the wig cap is. Um, you'll notice though that I've got the radiation symbol like the right way up, the way that you would normally do it. Whereas here they've got them upside down. It's kind of a fun little interplay between the different ways of doing it. So I think I'm gonna keep them this way, but I could always turn them around if I wanted it to match 
the way that they've done them on the cyberlocks. But yeah, that just sort of adds a little bit extra, doesn't it? And um, yes, once you have the wig cap on, you don't really feel that discomfort so much. Like, I mean, the, the wig cap itself, it is elasticized and I can show you the inside of it in the moment, or maybe I'll show you on the other one, um, but it is, oh. <laughs> They do have this strong elastic, and then in the middle, I'm not sure what all these extra straps are for, but I assume that they've got some kind of function in terms of keeping everything perhaps in the middle because some of it gets a little bit heavy, especially with all the foamies. Um, but yeah, so, you know, you've got all that going on, all the elastic. You don't notice this on top of it, and it's a reasonably thick material there. This bit is a little bit thicker because it's the folded over fabric plus the elastic underneath. So yeah, I'm not noticing any discomfort from these at all and it's really quite perfect. My god, every time I lay down one of the wigs on the ground and just spread it out, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I love it so much. But yeah, so we've got two wigs and some goggles. Now let's see what these random extra gifts are. I think this one is pretty obvious. It looks like a mask, so I will just open that up. Another thank you for your order card. Okay, here we go. You've got a purple biohazard mask. Obviously that'll match better with the purple one, but actually it's kind of nice with the yellow as a contrast because purple is like the opposite color to yellow. Um, yeah, so nice that I've got a cyber mask to go along with all this cyber goth type stuff. Like, They've really decked me out. Now, as with a lot of these kinds of masks, for my mouth shape, it does sort of suck in when I'm breathing in, and um, that can make it a little bit difficult to be talking. But if I'm just going out for the look, um, you know, it seems pretty easy to breathe in just like generally. It's just when you're doing more talking and you need to breathe, uh, that's when it really sucks in. If you're just sort of breathing casually, it didn't really feel like much of an issue. So if I just sit here, Yeah, it's actually quite comfortable. It's just, yeah, when I need to take a deeper breath, that's when this is a bit of a problem. Here's what it looks on the inside, and as you can see, there's a little space, so if you're one of those people who likes to use those little insert filters, you can totally do that. Whether or not it's worth using one is another question, but we won't get into that. And then, yeah, just these standard elastics here. Um, so, like, if it ever, you know, got a little bit too stretched, you'd probably want to put a little knot in the end. But for me, for my shape, yeah, it actually fits quite nicely. And I like that it's not overly tight because I've already got so much stuff going on here. So I've got, like, you know, the wig holding around my head, this holding around my head. I've got my glasses on my ears, a lot of stuff around my ears. And now also the mask. So I like that it's not overly tight because... <laughs> My poor ears getting so much exercise these days. But yeah, cute. Thank you, Atomic Guys, for the extra little gift. Now let's see what's in the last little package. Once again, a ridiculous amount of bubble wrap and tape for me to try and... I swear, some of this is like an intelligence test. How... <laughs> like a game that the universe is playing on us. Can we open these things? Because it can be kind of tricky when something's really well wrapped. Ooh, wow. Okay, there's some more tissue paper on the inside. Oh my god! they sent me a cute little necklace wow and it's like poison um so that's gonna go with the purple one as well like check that check that out guys it's actually got some kind of a liquid in it um i've seen like you know they sell these things individually same as they sell the masks individually so if you just wanted to buy them or if you wanted a specific one um but yes yeah, some of them actually glow in the dark so if you're the type of person who goes to a lot of places with that like black lighting i think um yeah you can wear these and oh my gosh that's adorable okay so like i'm fully set up really like i've got the the goggles with the radiation symbol go really nicely with this but i've also got a few things to set me up with the purple i'm gonna try that on and um we'll see how that all looks together all right, guys, how incredible is this? So I've got like a full setup, basically. I've got a little mask and this poison thing, and it was easy to adjust it. I put it on the like smallest setting possible just so you can see it above this picture. Something I'm also learning quickly is that you've got to put everything around your neck before this. So when I was trying this on, um, I forgot to put it on first. <laughs> so I had to take everything off, put it on over around my neck, and then put on the wig. So it's like, you know, when you wear corsets, it's always like boots first, corset last with this. Necklace, goggles first, wig last. But yeah, wow. <laughs> How much fun is that? So yeah, I'm really happy with my experience with the Atomic guys from Italy. And um, yeah, I'm super excited to be getting this 
finally getting the cyberlocks going and how is this going to fit in with um, the things that I'm doing. So like I've kind of given up on joining a metal band just because it's hard to find anyone in Sydney who really understands what I'm about and you know with my schizoid diagnosis <laughs> I'm sort of like maybe there just isn't anyone who will ever fit the criteria that I'm, I'm looking for. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna go back more to my solo project which is industrial like it's very electronic now i don't listen to a whole lot of industrial myself like mainly nine inch nails and a bit of android lust those are probably the main two although like you know i've listened to other things occasionally like um you know i'm familiar with angel spit they're locals or were locals i think they're in the uk nowadays or i don't even know um i think they split up with the original girl and whatever um just uh yeah i saw um amelia arsenic playing like a few years back with her solo project so yeah i'm sort of familiar with them but don't follow industrial very closely don't follow cyber goth very closely i'm sort of doing my own electronic industrial kind of music with my heavy metal influence although even with heavy metal i'm very like i have my own ideas about metal and i don't fit a lot of the more classic or popular styles of metal so I guess I'm trying to just find my way with who I am as a musician and a creative and yeah I thought shave my hair because most of the time I'm just at home no one sees me or else I'm at work where I can't have interesting hair really I have to tie it up like my boss doesn't mind but I need to get it out of the way so that I can do my work without it getting in, in front of me or you know the risk of accidentally cutting my hair instead of a bonsai um, so for everyday life, I just thought shaving my hair is the most reasonable thing. But I still want to go out and do my fun gothic looks and, um, you know, perform with a little bit more going on than just the bold head. Um, I won't be head banging in these because I don't want to mess them up too much, but they will add something extra if I'm on stage and I decide this is how I want to look. Or if I'm out with a friend and I just want to, you know, not be too boring, I want to spice things up a little bit. Um, but yeah, with the performance stuff, I'm sort of trying to find my own style and I'm trying to commit more to the soloist thing because um, yeah, I haven't been able to find a metal band that understands the music I like, understands the way I like to communicate, that I like to have things prepared instead of just going into a studio and randomly jamming, because I'm a vocalist, right? And with metal, it's very hard to, um, you know, just come up with things on the spot to improvise. I find that difficult because metal is very precise music, very technical, and if you don't know where the music is gonna go, it's hard to know what to do with the vocals, at least for me. Um, I like to go home, listen to the music, try a few ideas and craft it that way. So if the band hasn't figured out what they want, I just kind of sit there all prack, like trying to figure out where I'm going to do what. Like I don't enjoy that sort of random jamming. If it's jamming to songs that we know, great, but then we end up a cover band. So yeah, um, that side of things, also the subgenres, um, also like, I don't want to be writing all the music if I'm with a group because I could just be solo if I'm writing all the music. So um, yeah, and finding people who are on the ball, who are reliable enough, all that kind of stuff. It's too difficult. And I guess, you know, as a schizoid, realizing that self-sufficiency is actually part of my personality type. And I'm like, okay, this is why I'm constantly frustrated with people that's likely not going to change unless I meet some incredibly amazing, like people who just get it, which, you know, it's like winning the lottery, right? People who just click with my personality, I'm sort of, mm. So now that I've got this, like I've invested the money into it and all that kind of stuff, and I'm going to be hanging them up, which I'll show you at the end, um, you know, if I can figure it out. Uh, I'm just sort of finding ways to push myself more into being a soloist, going for a more industrial style, embracing a bit more, although I've tried to keep some of the heavy metal stuff. And to me, like if I was going full cyber, I might have just gotten a regular set of um, cyber locks, but this kind of like interesting cut to me has more of my metal vibe, like it's just a bit more aggressive. Um, at least that's how I perceive it in my head. And that's all that really matters is that I'm happy with it, regardless what anyone thinks. But yeah, so I couldn't just get rid of the fun hair. I had to do something. And yes, these, to get something custom, well, these aren't custom made, but um, you know, they, they actually make a few of these, but to get something like this fancy and get it sent all the way from Italy, um, from like, you know, they're from Etsy, 
Um, so you could get the whole global marketplace to get this sent all the way with all the work that they've put into it, like their, their, their artistry. Um, you know, it's not cheap, but the way I thought about it is um, every three to four months, I used to have to get my hair done and it would cost me maybe three to four hundred dollars, depending. Um, the most I ever spent on my hair was when I did get cyber tubies put directly into my hair and it cost about five hundred dollars. Imagine me doing that every few months, <laughs> somehow managing to pay for it. I figure I'll just pay up front for something interesting and it fits my lifestyle a lot better and hopefully adds to what I want to do creatively and that's why I've gone for this. So. I hope that makes sense. And I do have another set on the way, which will be exciting. And Patreon will also know a lot about that before any of you guys on YouTube in general. Um, yeah, fun. And uh, I really like, you know, I think um, the Atomic guys, they have been really, oh, that's not really like a business card, but it does show some of their connect with us, Facebook, um, Instagram, their email, and yeah, I found them on Etsy, so if you want to look them up, um, and I thought it was pretty reasonable, I think they're doing a great job with this, it's really interesting. Also to see, like, how they've made it, um, because the next set of Cyberlocks that I'm ordering are from a different company, and so it'd be interesting to see how they do it, and I think they've got a very different style. Um, but yeah, so I think this is a great solution for my problem, I think these are great products, so we've got the two cyber wigs, we've got the glasses with the custom lens. Um, I will say the black spikes kind of disappear a little bit because I've got a lot of black in these kinds of things. Um, so, you know, if you're looking at goggles, maybe consider silver spikes or else bright colored spikes in whatever. I think, you know, if you're going for black goggles might not work out for you. I think color wise silver or something bright just so it doesn't fade if you are wearing something with a lot of black. But I do kind of like them and I could wear them with some other stuff if I decide to. I've got a few ideas, but we'll see. <laughs> I could get really out of control with like hats and stuff, which I do need to get so my ears won't get sunburned so much. Although these will protect my ears. I could just go for dog walks wearing this and see what the local neighborhood thinks of me. Anyway, um, and then so I've got bonus, bonus gifts. Aren't they sweet to send this to me? Um, you know, especially these days, it's always good to have some extra masks around. And then also this cute little thing. Um, yeah, they've really taken care of me. Like, you know, I guess I did put in a big order and that's kind of their way of saying thanks for doing business with us. Um, thank you, Atomic guys, you know, for like, they answered really quickly when I was asking about this custom stuff and it got here pretty fast considering COVID. I was expecting it to take at least a month and it only took three weeks. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty happy with the quality of it. I mean, obviously I don't have a lot of experience with these, but to me, pretty cool. It looks like it's pretty well put together and they've got all these, oh my God, I keep catching glimpses of all the spiky foamy things like up the back there and it's just, I love it. So that's what I'm up to at the moment, guys. And there's more madness on the way. But before I go, I'll show you how I'm going to store these so that they don't get crumpled. Obviously for the goggles though, I think I'll store them in the little box that they made because I think that's adorable and it's just such a good little solution. Rather than having them hanging randomly somewhere, put them in the nice little box. I know, right? I never know how to finish a video, do I? I just go on and on and on. I feel like I should make a short version of these reviews, hey? All right, here it is, my solution to hanging these wigs in an overcrowded room. So basically what I did is I got some of these cheap picture rail hangers off Amazon. It's a little bit tricky to show you now that it's up, but yeah, you can see I tied the string around it a few times and it's hanging at an angle, but it sort of latches into the picture rail. And then yeah, I've been able to tie the string across and then I've done some fancy knots so that the wig holders can go on there and uh, yeah, just sort of extended it across, more knots, all the way to the other end. And these are what the wig holders look like without anything on them, so I'm prepared for another two incoming, although I've only got one actually in the works, so not sure what I'll do with the last one. But yeah, there you go, that's how I'm hanging them to keep them in good shape, and it's also fun to have them on display. Ta-da! Just moving some of the foam so you can see what it's like underneath. All right, there you go. So that's my review of the Atomic Guys wigs and the goggles and the little extras they gave me and also an update on some of the shenanigans that I'm up to. I hope you enjoyed it and are looking forward to what's coming next. 
See you later, guys. Toxic plethora, to be more precise. Obsessive need to categorize your futile language of indignation. You see the world as separation. You don't care, you want me to let you go. Alright. You didn't really want to be in the video, you're just curious. It's fine.